And Golden Goals has been more popular than ever this time with something like 40,000 entries. And I suppose that means something like 40,000 arguments on the merits of each particular goal. Imagine then the problems of our Golden Goals panel as they sorted out for us the official order of merit. Let's eavesdrop just for a moment. Again, please do. Right, Bernard, the uh, Stan Bowles goal, which you like very much indeed. Tell us about it. Well, I like it because it, it shows uh, teamwork and some plant on, on top of that is the individual skill. You see, it starts off with a throw in deep in their own half and uh, carried on by three or four players. And in the final move, Bowles is not only to beat a full back, but also to bend the shot wider the goalkeeper in order to get into the far corner. Yeah. Vic, yours. Well, I go for the Brian Robson goal because to, it demonstrates the difference between a great scorer and an ordinary, ordinary scorer. For instance, the way he went to meet that ball, as he met it, he glanced over his shoulder to see where the goalkeeper was and then headed on the half volley towards the corner of the net. It was a great goal. Pat, as a goalkeeper, you should know what makes a great goal. The painful one scored against you. I like the Charlie George goal, you know, absolutely fantastic shot mm -hmm. from uh, a good old-fashioned punt up the field. <laughs> a Gary off, Yeah, up and under. <laughs> laid off by Ray Kennedy. And uh, the height from which he struck the ball, mm. it must have been easily four foot off the ground. Absolutely no goalkeeper in the world could have stopped it. Mm. Great goal. I, I've got to go uh, to an extent for Don Rogers' goal because uh, I feel this is a kind of goal that the crowds love. It's the sort of thing that will send you to a football match another week. It was an individual goal, there was mud about, uh, Whittle did so well to hit the through ball, it was quickly conceived out of defence, had all the exciting things, the dribble, beating a couple of men, and even the final way in which he deceived the goalkeeper into thinking that the ball was going to go to his left, where in fact it went to his right. Yeah, I'm not sure he deceived him. He may, I, it looked almost to me as though he mishit the last one. And this is why uh, Stan Bowles deliberately put it in the far corner, and why Peter Osgood is a good effort, because he knew exactly where the goal was, although his back was to goal, mm. and yet he turned and hit the ball all in the same movement and put it in the only spot he could find. Yeah. yeah. Pat, John Pratt's goal, your colleague, what do you think about that one? Uh, he struck this ball very well. It was nice bit of build-up play with Witten in the open and pushing the ball about. Mm. But uh, some people followed the goalkeeper, but on the night I was right behind the shot and it moved, it must have moved a good yard, like perhaps maybe... Uh, swinging in the Yeah, air. swinging about. Maybe the goalkeeper could have been on side, but uh, it definitely did swing about. Would the crowd on the side of the pitch get no impression of the swing of a ball like that? No, you it? wouldn't. Like, obviously, I think perhaps maybe uh, Phil Parks, he might be a little disappointed he didn't get it. I'm just wondering what really, it, how you measure a goal. We know how we're measuring it, but could, could there be a measurement how much discussion it causes in the pub that night? Which of those, which of those would cause the most pub discussion that night, do you reckon? Well, I... Well, I think the public like the spectacular ones, don't they? Like, well, Charlie George and John Pratt, the ones that are hit out of the blue, flashed mm -hmm. by the goalkeeper. But I think, I, I myself, prefer one which shows the general build-up of a team and mm. also the subtlety of a, a forward bending it past the goalkeeper. I th I, this is a modern development. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it Jeff Hurst used time. to do this, didn't he? Yeah. And, and Martin Peters and uh, West Ham players, perhaps, if yeah. you like. And it's come very, very recent into our football. Instead of just blinding the thing, they're... Uh, finding the little gap that's left and swerving the ball to find it. Yeah. Well, that conversation went on for quite some time, and in the end, they came up with this final order of merit. Now, I'll give it to you from sixth best goal down to the winner. The sixth best goal, according to the panel, was goal D by Peter Osgood for Chelsea against Derby County. Example of how Webb is such a destroying influence in an opposing penalty area, causing men to worry all the time. Britain a little touch forward for Osgood. And he's got it through, and he has! Yes, Peter Osgood! Peter Osgood, the scorer, when there seemed no chance at all of a goal. The fifth best, goal A, scored by Brian Robson for West Ham against Manchester United. West Ham who've had so much more of the game and the chances have come their way but now for the second time find themselves behind. Robson hitting the goal! Oh, Robson! Two goals in a little more than a minute. The fourth best, goal C, scored by John Pratt, four Spurs against Wolves. 
again putting pressure on that Wolves back line. Munro out. Pierce. It's Pratt. Shivers down for Perryman. Gills in. Pratt. That's a good shot. And a beautiful goal. What a fabulous goal from John Pratt. And the Wolves defenders are absolutely stunned by that one. Into the final three, the third best. Go left. Charlie George for Arsenal against Manchester City. Marsh's back header. Clintock and Summerby going for it together. Kennedy, good header. George. Oh, my word! And the second best, goal B, by Stan Bowles for Queen's Park Rangers against Cardiff. Gibbons, Hazel, and Busby, a long one forward. Venables beautifully on now for Bowles. Oh, a tremendous goal! A fantastic goal by Chris Park Ranger. And that, of course, leaves us with the Golden Goals winner of 1973. It was the goal scored by Don Rogers for Crystal Palace, and it came against Stoke City. Quickly taken by Easterman, very well indeed, as Pidgeot goes in, and Pidgeot goes in again. Pinchel with, with a chance to get away, to give relief to the defence. Rogers now, a touch on for Whittle. Played again for Rogers. Marsh is covering him. But now if Rogers can attack him, he might have a chance. He's got past Marsh, and now he's confronted by another. Rogers again, and a goal! Not Rogers! So that was the winner. Let's just remind ourselves then of that winning order again. Goal A, goal E rather, Don Rogers, that was the winner. Second was goal B, Stan Bowles. Third was goal F, Charlie George. Fourth was goal C by John Pratt. Fifth was goal A by Brian Robson. And sixth, goal D by Peter Osgood. And I'm quite sure, without any doubt, there are a lot of you saying, well, I don't agree with that for a start. So we thought it best to give Jimmy Hill a chance to explain the thinking of our Golden Goals panel. Jim. The panel seemed to divide the goals into three groups, groups of two. First, they placed the complete goals, which involved passing, dribbling, and a clean finish. And of those, there was a very narrow decision in favour of Don Rogers over Stan Bowles. Then came the goals with a really explosive finish. And of those, Charlie George's shot was preferred to John Pratt's because it was hit on the volley with the ball so high to start with. A really remarkable skill. Lastly, the opportunist goals, beautifully conceived by Pop Robson and Peter Osgood. And Pop just came out on top because he hit it first time from McDowell's accurate centre. That's how it happened after quite a bit of argument, and I hope you enjoyed your arguments as much as we enjoyed ours.